scripture, Proverbs 4, 7. Many of us probably know it by heart. And then we're going to go to Ephesians 5, 17. Proverbs 4, 7. And Ephesians 5, 17. Proverbs 4, verse number 7. And Ephesians 5, 17. If you have it, say I have it. If you need a little time, I have it. We got them both. Proverbs 4, 7. Ephesians 5, 17. Amen. And if it is your custom, you can stand. If not, it's all right. Amen. Amen. God's word gives us this intelligence. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. A lot of us are after many things. God said, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Watch verse 8. Exalt her. Now we exalt a lot of things. We exalt people. We exalt our jobs. We exalt this and we exalt that. But God word says, exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Ephesians says, Wherefore be ye not unwise. Somebody tell your neighbor, don't be unwise. Don't be unwise. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. Again, Lord, I thank you for Pastor Cupperson and her husband and her labor of love that she shows towards you and towards your people. Thank you for this church, Lord, that you're growing and, and, and you're doing great things in their midst. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to stand here in this pulpit to say something to your people that makes sense. Thank you, Lord. Now I thank you again for just being God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your grace and your peace. Open up our hearts to hear what thus saith the Lord. Don't let them hear Henry Howard Jr. Let them hear the Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before I begin, I want to honor my wife, Yvonne Howard. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Put our hands together for her. And our people from Keep the Faith that came with us. Some of our elders, some of our evangelists, some of the members, we thank God for them. What I want to talk to you about is God's will for your life. The traditional view is that God has a detailed, specific, individual will for each of his children, which if not found or figured out precisely, brings grave consequences. That's the traditional view. Or some people may say religion. I want to say this, religion also brings great consequences to people. It has no thirst for the truth. It's self-serving. Even if I compliment you, it's to make me feel good. And we got to get out of religion and get into the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to say this up front that God is sovereign. He has a sovereign will and he also has a moral will. His sovereign will is God is God. He can do what he wants and nothing can stop it. Amen. Why do we get to breathe our next breath at this present time in life in this room? Why? God willed it. Then he has a moral will, which is his word. 
But today I want to deal with the traditional view or religion. How many of you understood what I just said? Sometimes when we say things, especially when bad things happen to us, sometimes we say it must be God's will. Bad things can happen to any and all of us, but we also have choices. And I come to encourage somebody today that if you've made some wrong choices, you still have not lost God's best for the rest of your life. I want to say that one more time. Because many in this room have made some bad choices. I don't know about you, but I've had enough dumb days. Cannot afford anymore. Amen. If you're with me, shout I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Just cannot afford anymore. But we want to believe that God's plan for us is about what kind of house we're going to live in, what kind of car we're going to drive. Those are our plans. God's plan is about the kind of person you are. God dreams about you having a future, not you getting he, you getting on his plan, but, but he getting on your plan, but you getting on his. And you and I obey him. Amen? Amen. God's not dreaming about where you're going to live. God's not dreaming about what person you're going to marry. God's not dreaming about what college you're going to go to or where you're going to spend your vacation. God's dream is for you to get closer and closer to him and you have an amazing relationship with him. Amen. Not what car you drive. Not where you're going to live. He wants you to get closer to him. Anybody want to get closer? Amen. Amen. The psalmist says, I will show you the path of life. And thy presence is fullness of joy. Watch this. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forever more. Pick up on this. At his right hand. If we learn to put him first, if we learn to make wise choices, if we learn to ask God to go before us, if we do what's right because it's right and then do it right, if we seek his right hand, there will be pleasures forevermore. Somebody ought to give God a praise. But I want to deal with this traditional view of God's will. Many of you may have heard that, that you better figure out what God wants. You better not make any wrong choices. This kind of stuff destroys people. That's why we have to be taught. God does not have a specific, detailed, individual will for you and I. Now, some of you may be ahead of me. And you may say, well, Pastor Howard, what about Jeremiah 29, 11? What about it? Surely this teaches us that God has a specific will for us. Let's turn there. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Amen. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, mm -hmm. to bring you or to give you an expected end. Some of your Bible says, I know the plans Amen. that I have for you. Amen. Now let's put it in context. What are the plans that God has for us? If we keep reading, we'll see the plan. He's about to tell us in his moral will. Verse 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Verse 13, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me 
with all of your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Again, you've heard me say this. We want to believe that God's plan is about what house with car. We're going to drive. Those are our plans. God is calling us into a deeper and deeper relationship in him. God is saying to us, my plan is for you to seek me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. This verse does not teach some detailed blueprint about your future that God is waiting for you to discover. Many people today, again, life is about choices. And like I said, if you've made some bad choices, God, have you, you, the best is still yet to come. But you find it often in people, uh, sometimes they get married, they say, you're my husband, and this and that and that and the other. Uh, I tell people that God, God puts guidelines, principles, and a way of living together. He does not put people together. Thank God you make a wise decision. Thank God you make a wise choice. But sometimes we make some wrong choices. Amen. If you stay inside the guidelines, listen, I don't know who's here today, but man should marry woman and woman should marry man. Don't go outside the guidelines. Amen. God's got some principles that you and I ought to follow. And we need to be following his principles and not ours. The Bible says, don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And he has a way for us to live. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. What is holiness? What God says is right, we now see is right. Thinking in line with God's word. Amen. But we can get messed up if we listen to the traditional view. If you if you if you start listening to stuff like my 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 my, my time clock is ticking and, and and if you if if we would just seek God first, yes. Amen. everything that we need will be added. Somebody shout, it will be added. It will be added. If we acknowledge God in every decision that we make, yes. he will make our paths straight. Yes. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. When life is difficult, you won't be wasting time. God promises that your path will be straight. God's highest purpose for us in this room this afternoon, this evening, is the kind of person we are. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. That's how come a lot of bondage, heartache, problems, we believe stuff that's not true. And we got his word. We can always go to his word. You don't have to ask anybody. You don't have to second guess. He says study to show yourself approved so that you won't be embarrassed. Amen. That's why Ephesians tells us, don't be foolish. But understand what the will of the Lord is. I want you to answer these seven questions in your mind, true or false. Number one, God has a specific plan for your life, which you are to discover and follow. You don't have to answer, just think in your mind. Number two, God's will can be divided into two categories. His perfect will and his permissive will. Does the Bible teach this? Number three, little hunches or promptings that I feel are God's way of revealing his will to me. Little hunches, uh, little promptings that I feel. Number four, a key factor in making godly decisions is do I have peace about it? Anybody ever uh, say, oh, I got peace, so I know I got to be in God's will. Mm. Number five, is it wrong to use fleeces in determining God's will? Think. Number six, when faced with two good, two good alternatives, I must be careful not to make the wrong decision. Which one is God's will for me? I can tell you this, whichever one you choose, 
If God is your father, he'll be there wherever you go. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Number seven, some people are called to full-time ministry, others are not. Now, if you had truth for some of them, you've made my point. There's a lot of misunderstanding about God's will, and a lot of it is abuse. A lot of things that we have experienced in life were the results of bad choices that were made outside of God's will. Somebody ought to say amen. Yeah. I, when you heard me say I had enough dumb days, yes. I don't need no more whippings from God. A lot of dumb, silly, stupid choices that I made was outside of God's will. Amen. We cannot be emotionally ruled. Because if you allow your emotions to rule you, they will lead you into bad decisions and bad decisions will ruin your life. Yes. <laughs> but I've had enough dumb deeds. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we got to realize this, that a lot of our, our choices are up to us. God is glorified best when we make the right choices. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. If you're here tonight and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, I didn't say if you go to church. A lot of people go to church. Amen. But have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. That's the best decision that any of us can make. We don't want to play church. Jesus is real. 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 To me. Thank God for Minister Key today when he was singing his song. He, I'll bless you. I, I'll praise you through the ups, through the downs, whether I'm happy, whether I'm sad. Then he had us say, I'll thank you. I'll thank you. Yes, I'll thank yes. you. Sometimes we will go through adversity, but still you got to thank him. Yes. Amen. 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 But we got to realize that some choices we made were outside of God's will. Amen? Amen. We got to understand this, that, that, that there are some things that God want us to do, but he will reveal them to us in an obvious way. Amen? Amen? Bible teaches us how to be saved, how to be forgiven, how to raise our children, how teaches us how to walk with God, how to pray and work. The Bible even teaches us how to use us our finances, how to make a wise purchase, and I just want to park there. We got to learn, remember God's guidelines, how to make wise purchases. What's a wise one and what's a foolish one? Some of us, when we know God is first in our lives, we tied, but then we get the urge to go buy a car, to go buy a this, to go buy a that. And sometimes it's a foolish decision if you have not kept God first in your tithing. Amen. And we mess ourselves up. Some of us can't even eat lunch, can't even pay our bills because we didn't ask God to go before us. We got to learn how to make wise choices and then we'll try to put a fleece out on God. We'll, we'll try to do it by faith. God said a wise man will first count the cost. No matter what you go buy, no matter what you go purchase, you got to consider God first. Because a lot of the saints, you can't even bless the church because we're so strapped. We're holding on to every penny that we have. And God wants us to be good stewards. God wants us to be able to bless your local congregation. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. But God teaches us all these things. There is nowhere where the Bible teaches us, nowhere where we ought to know God's will. Not one place can you find it. In fact, knowing God's will is a question we are never even told to ask in Scripture. No place does the subject even come up. God's will is about the kind of person you are. 
And I, I, I'm tired of seeing, and I'm not saying this to make nobody feel bad. I'm not saying this to make you feel condemned because we can always go to the Father boldly and ask for grace to ask for help in time of need. Amen. Amen. We got too many drinking Christians. We got too many smoking Christians. We got too many Christians that shack up and whatever you want to call it. When that's not God's best Somebody shout for me. For me. Amen. 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 I want to just say this, man. We 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 we, we got to get there, and we're going to get there. I want to take two things off of the list that I gave you that I told you to think about. How many of y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. When it comes to making a decision, if I have peace about it, I know I'm in God's will. Anybody would raise their hand and just agree with me and say, yeah, I've done that before. I've got peace. That's a dangerous thing to do. I remind you of the story of Jonah. God told Jonah to go where? Where did he go? Jonah was running from God. When the wind began to blow and the waves began to rage and the people that was on that boat said, something is wrong. <laughs> Trouble is in the house. Jonah was running from what God told him to do. The people thought that they were going to die. Where was Jonah? At the bottom of the boat, sleeping. I would say he was in a very peaceful state. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So he thought that because he had peace, that he was right in the middle of God's will. And, and, and I'm here to tell us today that, man, we got to stop that foolishness. Because sometimes God will ask you to do some things, and there may not be no peace. <laughs> That's what the struggle is all about. That's why, you know, you're nervous and, and you're shaking and you're aching. I'll prove it a little more and a little later. Colossians 3.15, let's turn there. We dealt with Jonah. Anybody ever had any frictions in their relationships? Come on now, I heard maybe one or two people. That's what makes you stronger. <laughs> you know what it's, yeah. I mean, God's will, we don't go through no foolishness. It's heaven's best if we just you know, just live on a bed of ease and have no problems at all. But in this world, we will have problems. R.W. Shambach said, you don't have any problems, all you need is faith in God. How many of y'all remember Shambach? <laughs> Colossians 3.15 says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful that the peace of God rule a key element in making godly decisions is not peace do I have peace about it that is not what this verse is talking about let the word rule. When I'm out of the will, I may have some anxiety. I may have some frustrations in my life. But when I'm in the will, I have peace. Let's check out the context. 
verse 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Verse 14 says, and above all things, put on what? Love. What's the context? Relational strife. What happens when we have an argument? When there is a big blow up? What happens when, 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 when we're at one another's throats? What's supposed to happen? I'm supposed to forgive. I'm supposed to put on love. I'm supposed to let peace rule in my heart. I may have some anxiety. I may have some tension in my heart. I might have to get to you quickly so that I can work out the fault between us in our relationship so that we can have peace. Somebody shout again. We've never been taught that. Sometimes we act a fool. And I say the reason why you don't hang with devils and, 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 and act like the devil because they pull you out of your element and then you find yourself acting just like them. Amen? Amen. Peace in the absence of relational strife. Romans says as much as possible live peaceably with all men. That's what Colossians is talking about. It has absolutely nothing to do with making decisions. We need to seek wisdom and we need to seek godly counsel. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 I'll take you to our brother Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's see how he handled making godly decisions. Or did he have peace all the time? In the Garden of Gethsemane, he was doing exactly what God called him to do. He responded, not my will, but thine be done. My question is, did he have peace? <coughs> Say it one more time. No. Did he have peace? I'll come over here. <laughs> the Lord Jesus was doing exactly what God told him to do. In the garden, he responds, not my will, but thine be done. And my question to you is, did he have peace? No. I'll say it one more time. <laughs> the Bible said that he sweat great drops of sweat like blood. That's how intense the pressure was on his life. Now I'll ask you one more time. No. <laughs> In the garden, Jesus was right in the middle of God's will, going through for you and I. Jesus did not want to do it. Jesus said, if there was another way, but there was no other way. And my question to you is, did he have peace no, no, no. about it? And the church said no. <laughs> this notion, saints, that obedience brings peace and disobedience brings anxiety, sometimes disobedience does it. Sometimes it is sad to say that you can look at some of our brothers and sisters and they're so relaxed in their sin they are so comfortable doing what they want to do and they'll flaunt it in your face and dare you to say anything about it. And they know what to do. And they know what not to do. So I've come to say today that 
just because you have peace about it don't mean that you're right in the middle of God's will. I'll take another one off the board. Can we use fleeces to try to get God's attention? Amen? Amen. There was a certain man, and I want to say this man, there's no funeral like a little baby's. Today I was at a funeral, five-year-old little baby boy. It was a pretty rough one. Friday, I have to do one for a one-month-old. And uh, same week, Pastor, one of our elders' son couldn't wake up. He's in the uh, St. Christopher's Hospital right now, not responding at all since Sunday. But those kids' funerals is pretty rough. Amen. But we still have to put our faith and confidence and trust in God. We can't put a fleece out on God. Lord, if you do this and you do this, if God is sovereign, he does what he wants to do. A certain man was heartbroken. Church leader. His wife was dying in the hospital. He flipped open his Bible and his eyes fell on John 11, 25. Whosoever lives and believes in me will not die. He flipped it over again and his eyes fell on Psalms 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. He should have known better. He told his wife, get up, you're not going to die. Told the doctors she's going to live. I got a word from the Lord. I know what his will is. Well, guess what? She died. She died. He should have known better. But we make silly decisions. We do things that don't line up with God's word. The best decision that we could ever make is to always ask God to go before us. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I challenge every person under the sound of my voice tonight. I gave you seven things to think about. Two we dealt with. Just because I have peace don't mean I'm in God's will. When I'm in anxiety and I'm in trouble, I'm not flipping over my Bible to see what my eyes fall on. I'm not going to put God to the test. I'm going to pray and trust him with the results. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I have come to tell Pentecostal Faith Assembly on their 57th anniversary. And you already know it. If God be for you. Yes. <laughs> through the storm. Through the rain. And I come to tell some of you. She's talked about faith. This church is built on faith. Without it, it is impossible to please him. Our church is built on faith. When my eyes fell on Paul, we said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Right there, I knew that's the name of our church. Keep the faith ministries. Amen. Amen. All of us are going to go through something. We got to. Somebody shout, got to. Got to. Got to. Keep the faith. Keep, Keep the, the faith. faith. There's no shortcuts. There's no in-betweens. We're not looking for another way. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Now, come on, come on, come on. We're, we're not looking for another way. Somebody tell your neighbor, we're going to do it God's way. We're going to do it God's way. God bless you. Hope you got some understanding. Amen. Come on, give God praise.